We greet everyone the peace of the Lord. I'd like to invite those who can to stand up in reverence to the reading of the Word of God that is located in the book of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah 58. I think so. Isaiah 58, verse 11. Isaiah 58, verse 11. We are going to read together. Amen. Let us read. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Glory to God. The church may be seated.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Look to Jesus. My brethren, today is the first service, first Sunday service of this year. And uh, we can see how time passes by. A, a short while ago, we were speaking about the 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 2000 bug and the, comp the, the computers are going to stop and the planes are going to fall from the sky. Who remembers that? There's, there's a group here that has not even heard about the 2000 bug. The computers were going to break, to crash and nobody knows it was the computers were designed to the calendars were designed to go only to the year 2000 and we are now on the second decade of this century we're no longer this century is no longer a teenager is now a youth we have to face reality the age comes the weight of age comes the tiredness but it's all part but it is interesting that in all of this all those years that passed by, we always had the help of a God. The Lord never let His church and His, his servants uh, unprotected. We are testimonies of this. The ones who are in the Lord for already many years can testify of this with uh, pride uh, it is a joy for us to say this we have a God that takes care of his people the year of 2020 is going to be a year in which once again the Lord will take care of us we go we are in a desert but we can find water this this the song that we just sang speaks about that to find water in the desert why? Because the Lord is beside us. And the text that we just read here tonight speaks exactly of this. It speaks of the life and the church. It speaks about the project of God to His people. The text begins saying that the Lord will guide you continually. This is our God, a faithful God. He's not a God that takes care of us one day and neglects us the other. He's not a God that uh, cared for us in the year 2015 and only took care of us on the year 2017. No, our Lord is a God that takes care of His people continually. This is the promise of God. This is the word that the Lord has for us tonight on this first service of Sunday night of this year. And why is that? Because every day of this year, the Lord will take care of our lives. It will be continually. It will have con continuity. And this is for what? For what reason? It is because God knows our limitations. He knows our needs. The Lord knows our uncertainties. The Lord know very well, and knows man very well. God knows that today man may be in the Lord, but tomorrow man may not be with the Lord. God knows that man changes a lot. Man seeks too many things. But and on these wanderings, going back and forth, man ends up forsaking the Lord sometimes. But the text speaks exactly of this because the, he says the Lord will guide you continually. Why? Because the servant of God needs the direction from the Lord. The Bible compares this world with a desert. Right? The Bible compares the world in which we live with a desert. Who here has seen a desert? Who tried to walk on the desert? It is complicated. There are no... You know, Street signs, north, south, east, west, east. 
there, there's no street. On the desert, there's, this doesn't exist. If you are in the desert, you can die there. You can walk miles thinking that you're going on the right direction, but you are going in the opposite direction. You end up getting lost. During the day, it's, it's hot. At night, it was very cold. Besides the lack of water, there's no water. There's not a place for you to rest. There's not a place for you to, to say, oh, I'm going to sit down here for 10 minutes and I'm going to rest. It's going to be worse. But the Lord God, He promises that He will guide us continually. <coughs> what does that mean? The Lord wants to give to us an experience. The desert is very difficult. And the world in which you live is also very difficult. We don't know that what direction we need to take. We don't know who to trust. We don't know the things are going to, uh, we are going to face. We have 365 days. Oh, this, this year has one extra day. It's a leap year. We have 366 days. At least 365 day, days ahead of us. Today is a leap year. It has one extra day. One extra day. So we have here of all this time ahead of us. And now, what can we do? You invest on the stock, today's bad, tomorrow gets better, and then you lose everything. So you're, not go you're going to switch jobs thinking that's the best idea, and tomorrow a new boss comes and you may be fired. Today, uh, here, here in America, if you don't produce, if you don't work, you, you get fired. If you get fired, you don't have uh, the same uh, protections in the law that we have in Brazil. The life in this country is not easy. In the world is not easy, and we have all of this ahead of us. And so, what can we do? The Lord wants to guide us. The promise of the Lord is this, is to guide us, to show to us the path. However, you, how can you do this? You want to overcome? You want to be victorious in this year? Maybe you are going through years of defeats, years of years of frust uh, frustration, of trials that you didn't win, uh, battles that you lost, and individually. And this year, you want to be victorious. The secret for you is to uh, let the Lord guide you. Let God take control of your life. Let the God take control of your boat, the direction of your life, and you will see that you can have victories on the Lord. Because the text says, the Lord will guide you continually. The Lord wants to guide us. He wants to take His people in the same way He guides His church. But we need to be inside of this body. We need to be involved on this body. We need to be in this environment in which the Lord is the head. And we as the body, we are guided, we are conducted by the orders that come from the head. Body is this. The mind, the brain speaks, you move the head, hand, you, itch, you scratch here and there, you take a step and the brain thinks it and the body does. So the secret for your victory in this year 2020 is to be linked to, to the body. Yesterday the Lord gave a, a spiritual gift of giving yourself to the Lord. Give your life to the Lord. Your, your day, everything that you have, give it to the Lord. Let the Lord do to you what He knows it to do which is to have a life redeemed from the blood of the Lamb. Let the Lord take direction of everything. And you see how things are going to change. Why? Why can we say that? Because the Word of God gives us this guarantee. 
We're not speaking here about something that may happen or something that surely will happen. No. If you let the Lord continually guide your life, you will have victories. Because this is the secret of the church. This is the life of the church. And the text continues saying, and satisfy your soul in drought. It's going to, is it going to be a year of only victories? No, it's not possible. We're going to have a year of trials, tribulations. Yes, we always have. Because the servant of God cannot live only on planting. Paul says that because I know to live when I, there is plenty and I know how to live when there is lack. The Lord has taught me. So the church of the Lord needs to live all of this. We need to have, we are going to have moments of sadness and pain because the word of the Lord also says that the Lord has never deceived us. He said, in the world you have afflictions, but be of good cheer because I overcame the world. And if we, if we, if we are in Jesus, if we belong to Jesus, we are going to have victories as well. We will overcome the world together with our God. And, and satisfy your soul in drought. This year is going to be a year where the Lord is going to give us a great victory. But we are going to go through trials. And when Israel left Egypt, the Hebrew people, when they <coughs> left Egypt, they spent 40 years on the desert. The Lord could, uh, could have simply prevented this from happening. The Lord could. They could have s s fallen asleep in G Egypt and waking up in Cana. Of course, we have a God of, that can do miracles, but, but why God allowed them to spend 40 years on the desert? Because there are trials from the Lord that are sent for perfecting. There are trials that we are going to go through this year, moments of difficulty in our lives this year, that they need to cause a, an awakening on us. Lord, what is it? Where am I failing, Lord? Because the failure is always ours. It's never God's failure, because ne God never fails. He's always knowing. He's all-knowing. He's omnipresent. He is almighty. God knows everything. He is the God from eternity to eternity. He is God. If there is any failure, it, it, this failure is, is uh, ours. Many times God allows uh, trials to come. Uh, God allows the drought to come in order to speak something to us. But it is not during the drought that we should give up on the Lord. It's not during the time of trial, tribulation, we can say, Lord, oh, up, up to this day is all right, but now the trial came, I'm going to go away, I'm alone. No, moments like this are moments in which the Lord uses those moments in order to cause us to seek Him more, in order to cause us to come closer to the Lord, because the more trials we go through, the more will be our seeking to the Lord. And why is that? Because the Lord at this moment, He will satisfy our soul. If we are in the Lord, if you are waiting for, for the providence from the Lord, the trial may come, the tribulation may come, but it will pass. Because the plenty will come from the part of the Lord. If we remain in the Lord, if we, if we trust in the Lord, the plenty will come in the most difficult moment of uh, moments of our life because it is always like this. If you pick up the Bible from every stories of all the servants, the ones who persevered on the Lord, the plenty came, the help came. Help came on the right moment. The hand of the Lord was laid upon us at the right moment. He and He took us away. The, on the moment of drought and placed us in the place where plenty is uh, at our disposal. And, and satisfy your soul in drought. 
and strengthen your bones. And when the Bible speaks about bones, and the Bible speaks about structure, right? The bones, they serve, they have the, the role of keeping a structure up. If I'm here standing, it's because there's a structure that keeps my body standing. If there's no structure, if this structure didn't exist, we would just crumble. So when the Word speaks about fortify, strengthen your bones, it's because the Lord wants this year to strengthen our structure. The Lord wants to perfect our structure. And what is our structure? It's the doctrine. It's the Word of God. It's what maintains the body standing. It's what maintains the church standing. And that's what maintains the faith in the heart of the servant, the faithful. It is the doctrine, the blessings. Of course, they will come. The miracles, they will come. But we cannot only live off of the miracle. We need to live off the doctrine. Off the, we need to preserve the doctrine. That's why the Lord says this. And strengthen your bones. Because structure has this purpose. And the Church of the Lord needs to be involved with the doctrine. Understanding the doctrine and living the doctrine. Testifying of the doctrine. Because it is the Word of God that has been preserved throughout this time. It is not the experience of a pastor. It is not the mind of a man. It is not what a leader wants for people. No. What was preserved was the doctrine. What the enemy of our souls always tried to place his hand on, destroy, cancel, change, modify. Why? Because the Word of God is true. Is the truth. And what changes men's heart is the Word of God. And you will know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And this year is going to be a year in which if you allow the Lord to guide your life, the Lord will give you, uh, you satisfy your soul in the moment of the trial. And now the Lord is going to strengthen the doctrine in you. And you see how you understand better with greater clarity, without any doubt, what happens in the world, what happens in your life. Many times people, they enter into the church, they accept the Lord, but later on they they vanish. Why? Because they didn't have the understanding of the doctrine. Because the one who understands the word, that leaves the word, and that has their life based in Jesus, they never abandon the Lord. Because in Jesus there is no failure. In Jesus there is no injustice. In Jesus this doesn't exist but in man, on man. Yes, but man, many times, man fails, he goes bankrupt, it deceives, but in Jesus, nothing can shake, shake our lives. May this year have this purpose, may this year may serve as a way to strengthen us, a year in which you will open up your heart and seek to read the Word continually. Because the, one who, who, the ones who are doing this, the text continues saying, you shall be like a watered garden. You will be like a watered garden. Have you seen a garden? Who amongst you has seen a, a garden that is very beautiful, you know, many flowers, very flowers, a very well-groomed garden? It's something that is very beautiful, right? We have a um, public garden in Rio de Janeiro, something beautiful to see. Well, and why is that? Because there is life there. And the water garden is exactly this. When you see a garden very well taken care of with green leaves, with red of the flowers and the yellow and all of this, it's because, it's, it's because the garden is being well taken care of. It's being watered. The lack of the water causes the death to a garden. But a garden is uh, is watered, is, has life. Everybody looks at it and they all say, here there is somebody that is taking care, of, taking care of it. And when the Bible speaks about a garden, about many flowers, it is speaking about the church, because the church of the Lord is watered. 
the Holy Spirit is the one who takes care of the Church of the Lord. The Holy Spirit is the one who, whom every day intercedes for us with inexpressible moanings. It's the Holy Spirit that is tirelessly fighting, persisting with man, going after man, seeking man, bringing man to the presence of the Lord, taking man out of sin, communicating with man, speaking with man, saying, look, there is a better way. Don't do this. This is all the care of the Lord. This is the care of the Holy Spirit towards our lives and the Church of the Lord throughout these years always has always been a watered garden. And the entire history of the Church from Jesus to this day, the entire history of the Church has never the church has never lacked the water to water uh, this garden, to bring beauty, to bring life, to bring joy, to, to place in the church that causes others to see and, and be amazed and uh, causes man to want to be a part of this. And this text here is specifically for us, for the Church of Pompano, because this year the Lord wants to give to us a joy that has never been seen before and the promise of the Lord. It continues. You shall be like a water garden and like a spring of water where waters do not fail. Make a covenant with the Lord. May this year you may you dedicate more to the Lord. Make a covenant with the Lord so that you may take times aside with, to read the Word, to be in the services, to come to the early dawns, to um, have early dawn services at home, and to be part of your, take, take a hold of your call as a servant of God, like someone that has uh, a role in the church, and so that this year you may exercise what the Lord one day gave to you this blessing of you being able to work for the Lord and you preach the gospel and being a, a water garden because if you do like this you will be like a fountain of water and a spring of water and the waters from the spirit will never lack in your life and that's why my brethren this year this is a year in which all of us we have this verse as as a direction. Well, this year I need to be more used by the Lord. I want to give myself more to the Lord or dedicate more to the Lord. I will become more available. I will be more present. I will be more involved. Not on Maranatha Church, but on what is the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of the Maranatha Church. I need this. I need the Lord to use my life so that I may be a spring of water, so that the waters of the Lord may not fail in my life. The, the praise group is going to sing a song, and you at this moment will be placing on the altar of the Lord your life, you. Do not worry about your, your brother beside you. Don't worry about someone, someone else. You need to place your life in God's altar. Make a covenant with the Lord that you want to be used with greater authority and like greater willingness so that the Lord may operate in your life.
Glory to God. We're going to stand up, my brother. We're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. We praise you because you are our shepherd and will and never shall never want, Lord. The trial may not be we're not may not be lacking the trials and infirmities, but we'll be more than victorious in Christ Jesus. That's why we praise you, Lord, for your revealed word tonight which is life for our lives. We praise you, Lord, because you, you have care for our lives in a, a, more, a way that is more than special. We praise you, Lord, because if God is for us, who will be against us? We praise you, Lord, for this night. We praise you, Lord, for your grace in the name of Jesus. My brethren, the Lord has shown that throughout the service, an operation of the Lord was taking place. Lives were delivered. Hearts were transformed. People that were tied up with the things of this life, they have been delivered tonight. And the Lord has operated peace. Has, he has operated joy. He has operated renewal. He has operated the willingness to continue in the Lord and all of this is the result of us being here in this service, in this place, a place where that was completely prepared for the upper, for the operation of the Lord. Many prayed for the service. I've been praying since this morning for the service. You didn't come here by chance. You entered here because the Lord brought you to this place, and the Lord wants to operate all of these th things to you as well. And the Lord also has shown a man who came here with many difficulties. And he was complaining a lot because he had a shoe that was too tight. But during this service, the Lord gave him an understanding that the problem was not on the shoe that was too tight. But the problem was on the fact that he did not accept what is the gospel of the Lord. The path that we need to follow that, that God gives us is a narrow path, but it is a path that will lead us to salvation. The Lord has called of us. The Lord works in the life of man. He shows why, because the more we are close to the Lord, the more we need to accept what comes from the Lord. The more you are involved 
uh, more the Lord is going to call of you because the Lord does not allow us to be here and also outside at the same time. That's why the word of the Lord needs to be believed. When the people left the Egypt, the lamb needed to be eaten as a whole. The eternal gospel, the revealed gospel, the doctrine of the Lord needs to be implemented in your life as a whole. Do not complain. Do not complain because it's not going to be of any help. But tonight the Lord is giving you the means to withstand and so that you may live according to the word. And when you begin to word according to the word, you will see that you will be a watered garden. Because the hand of the Lord are laid upon this watered garden. The blessing of the Lord is upon the church, upon this garden. Do not leave the garden. Be a part of this garden. Amen. Because if you leave from under the hands of the Lord, you will be in the period of drought for a long time. And the blessing of the Lord is upon the faithful church. And the Lord tonight is inviting you. He's calling you so that you may be a part of this people that is being prepared by the Holy Spirit to live in heaven. Amen. We are going to pray, bring the service to a close. And if you want a prayer privately, and uh, what the Lord spoke to your heart, if you want, we are making ourselves available to pray for our life so that the Lord may confirm everything that he has already spoken to you tonight so that this verse, this text, this message may be something that is real, a life in your life. Let us close our eyes. Lord God, we want at this moment praise your name, Lord, for a church that made himself will, they, that were, was willing to be in the house and also for the ones who accept an invitation were touched by the Holy Spirit to be in our house. We praise the Lord for the service of adoration to your name. For every prayer that was made here, every song that was sang, the prayers that were said in secret in the hearts of the people that only you heard. And we ask that tonight we will make confirm and receive each request every confession, every covenant that was placed before your altar, Lord, every proposal, so that we may have a year of victories in your presence. Remove any difficulty and lack of faith, and the forgetfulness or, or laziness, and that we may be always in a, as a single body united in you, Lord. Take us home in peace. Give us a week of, a week of victories is the prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. In your name we say that the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may be seated. Amen. We are making ourselves ourselves available to pray for you, for your family, for your health, and may the Lord confirm His blessing in our hearts. Peace of the Lord.